Unit 7, working with percentages. Uh, we're going to talk about percentages two different ways. And the first way we're going to do is proportions. So if you look off to the right here, um, proportions. The easiest way to think about it is you're going to think percent over 100, as you see here, equals is over of. Now, I like to use is over of because one, I think it kind of flows nicely and I can remember it pretty easily. And the second reason is because those are the main words you're going to see in these problems. Another way is you all, whoa, wrong button. You always want to think part over whole. So if you're like, is over us doesn't make a whole lot of sense, well, you always want the total, the total amount, the whole thing on the bottom, and then the part of it that you're dealing with on the top. So when we look at the two problems here, and these are on page 49 in the boxes, so what amount is 20% of 160? I always, always, always start with the percent. So 20%, the percent always goes over 100. So 20 over 100. Then when I look at is, here's is, what's connected to that? What amount? Um, I don't know. So if it's what, you don't know, right? There's x of, of 160. So 160 goes on the bottom. Cross multiply. Solve that. You should come up with x is 32. So for all of these, I'm going to go through and help you set them up and then um, let you solve them, come back. So in the second one, 65%, let's start with the percent. Percent is always over 100. Of 300, well, of goes on the bottom. So 300 is on the bottom. Is what number? X on the top. So again, we have our proportion. So 65 over 100 equals X over 300. Cross multiply, and you should come up with X is 195. Okay, so that's page 49. Let's set up a couple more. <clears throat> Actually, these are the top four uh, boxes there on page 50. So why don't you hit pause, go ahead and set these up and solve them, and then come back and look at them. So, okay. So on the first one, percent over 100 is 72 of what number? X is 180. The second one, 80%, percent always goes over 100, of what number is 32? Cross multiply, and X is 40. And the third one, 60 is, okay, so is, what percent, ooh, I don't know the percent, of 200? You'll also notice I always put my percents on the left. I don't know why. I, I, I'm weird like that. So when I cross multiply here, I get x equals 30. But it, it's not just a number, right? Remember, we are trying to find the percent. So our answer should be 30%. And yes, it does matter. And in the last one, what percent? So x over 100 of 75 is 15. So the 15 goes on the top. Cross multiply. You come up with x is 20, and once again, we're finding a percent, so you need to use the percent. All right, at the bottom of page 50, you're going to see five problems. Go ahead and do those five, and then come back and look at them, and I'll have them completed here. So we are on page 50. Okay, so working through these, percent over 100 is over of, and you should come up with an x value of 90. What percent of 75? So that goes on the bottom. 45 goes on top. Come up with 60, and we're looking for the percent. So always make sure you keep track and you're paying attention when you need percents. Um, number three, 20%. So that 20 goes over 100. Of 90, missing piece is X. And we come up with a value of 18. What percent? We don't know. 527 is of 850, and we come up on that one, 62%. So hopefully those first four worked out pretty well for you. Okay, now when you look at number five, 15% of Americans are left-handed, and there are 314 million Americans. How many are left-handed? Well, when you see the percent, right, percent is automatically over 100. Now on the right side, the is and of doesn't really come in handy here, but part to whole, 314 million Americans. 
Well, is that all of them or some of them? It's all of them. So I'm going to go on the bottom. Now, we're talking in millions. So when I cross multiply and solve, I come up with 47.1, and that is in millions. So 47.1 million Americans are left-handed. Okay? So that there is uh, page 50. Now, when we get into page 51, we are now dealing with equations. So um, I don't care which way you set them up, percent, or either proportions or equations. Um, it might depend on what you want. However, with story problems, I always use proportions, and that's just kind of my thing. So I'll go ahead and type up some problems, and we'll work through them. Okay, on page 51 with the equations, um, the big thing is keywords. So as you read through the sentence, so this in this first one, this was in the box on the bottom of page 51. What amount? I don't know. So there's the X. Is. Is means equals. 20%. Well, when we're playing with math, percents aren't okay. So I'm going to change that to a decimal. Of means multiply 160. So in this case... The math is pretty simple. We take 0.2 times 160, and I know that my x value is 32, right? Not bad. But you do have to remember when dealing with percents that you've got to do a lot of decimal back and forthness. So let's look at the second one. 75%, 0.75, of 12. So multiply that by 12 is what number? So again, a pretty decently easy one. We take 0.75 times 12 and we get an x value of 9. Let's go to page 52. All right, so in the 4 in the box at the top. So I would um, go ahead and try to solve these and come back and see what you can do um, and try to solve them with equations. So when you write them up, 105 is 70% of what number? Now to solve this one, right, we divide both sides by 0.7 and we get x equals 150. And the second one, 15% of what number is 39? Again, we divide by the number in front of x, divide by 0.15, and we end up with x equals 260. All right, now the last two are a little bit different because we've got to find the percent. So 250 is what percent, I don't know, of 50. So x times 50. Again, we're dividing, right? Same process. So we divide by 50, and I get x equals 5. But that's a number. I need it to be a percent. So how do I change a number to a percent? I multiply by 100 or move the decimal two places to the right. So we are actually at 500%. Right? What percent of 50? So 50 is way smaller than 250, which is why we have such a big percent. Um, the last one I think works a little bit nicer. What percent of 75? So x times 75 is 15. Well, again, we're going to divide by the number with x. So I get x equals um, 0.2. Well, let's change two places. So we end up with 20%. And the, the, that's where I think the proportions are easy, or easier, I should say, because you automatically, when number over uh, 100 is always the percent, you don't have to do any decimal playing. It's already there. Okay, at the bottom of page 52, I want you to go ahead and work on those five problems. Um, try to do them with equations, and then come back and look at them. Okay, number six. 80% of what number is 16? Divide by 0.8, x is 20. And number seven. 15 is what percent of 90? Divide by that and you get 0.1666 repeating and uh, two decimal places to the right because we're talking about percents so we get approximately 16.7 percent. 30 percent of 240 is what number? Multiply those you get a number of 72. Number nine, state sales tax is 7 percent. How much tax would you pay on a $250 item? Well, 7 percent of the item is taxed, right? It's tax. So 7% of 250, you would pay $17.50 in tax. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, number 10, I, 
there's definitely a, an equation way, but this is one where I think it's very, very important. Pro proportions are just easier, and I'm going to say, forget the equation, I'm writing the proportion. 7% of the population has type, blood type O negative. If there are about one half of one million people in Indiana who have blood type O negative, estimate the population. Well, that's a lot of words and a lot of information, and if you're trying to write an equation, it's very difficult. But we can say 7% percent over uh, 100. One half of one million. Okay, well, first of all, one half of one million is 500,000 people. Those people have O negative. Is that part of the population or all of the population? Well, it's part. So 500,000 is going to go on the top. The whole population that we're trying to estimate goes on the bottom. So if you use that setup of the proportion, we will end up of an approximate population of 7,142,857 rounded to the nearest person. And I think that is, is pretty good. I'm going to cut that off for the first video uh, so it doesn't get too long. So come back, um, video two, for more examples. And I'm going to do story problems of the second half of this uh, excitement.